Hello friends, welcome back to the West Fork channel. It's a chilly day up here in the Okanagan Highlands today. So, I'm just hanging out at the homestead and I thought I'd give you a quick review on a newer hatchet that I have that I've been using for camp chores and for uh, firewood and kindling. This is the Swedish made all mic hatchet and we're going to give it a thorough inspection today. We're going to find out how it performs in various types of wood and how it can help us handle various camp chores. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you two things that I really don't like about this hatchet, but why I would go ahead and buy it anyway. So stay tuned. I'm going to build a fire to take a little chill out of the air and we'll take the all mic over to the chopping block and see how it does. First thing I noticed when this came in the mail is the nice fancy box that they sent it in. It says Holtz Brook, made in Sweden since 1697. So I opened it up, and the next thing I noticed was a beautiful sheath that came with it. And it kind of surprised me that Holtz Brook has their own axe booklet that comes with the axe. I'm not going to lie, this thing is over a year old. I think I bought this uh, in the spring of 2020 and it didn't just come out of the box brand new. I've been splitting kindling in this shop with this for uh, well over a year so I've really gotten to know the hatchet and uh, I'll show it to you what it looks like after it's been used for a year. When it came in the box, it was razor sharp. And that's one thing I didn't expect because I had bought it from a uh, online dealer. I didn't know. I'd never bought a uh, all my hatchet before. But the bit was very, very sharp. Probably maybe one of the sharpest hatchets I've ever seen. And uh, the next thing I noticed was the tomahawk shaped head. And... Uh, the next thing I noticed was the beautiful handle that they sent me. This is a textbook piece of hickory, and I'll try to get you a close-up shot so you can see how beautiful it is. I don't know if all of their Axe products have this quality of hickory, but I feel like I really got one here. I don't know if you can see the wood grain there, but if you hold the uh, hatchet up on its edge, it's nearly vertical. And uh, it stays that way all the way, all the way through. This has the round wedge fastener, a wooden wedge with their round wedge, which is very secure. I haven't had it come loose, and I really like that style of, we used to call them Grady wedges. But this is a, a different design, and I've used those in some of my uh, repaired hatchets and axes and I really like the way they hold. The fit and finish where it goes into the head looks really nice and uh, it's also very true if I can get you a shot. Uh, down, if you look down the bit there it lines up with the handle really well. Almost perfectly. I don't know how they do that. Before we get started seeing how the all mic performs in various types of wood, I want to tell you why I bought one. First of all, Holtzbrook is one of the oldest axe forges in Sweden, and that was something that I was interested in. Uh, they have a great rep reputation. Uh, I was looking for a hatchet to process kindling. I build a fire in the shop every morning to go to work, and uh, I wanted one. It was a little bit longer. I'd been using the Gransper's Wildlife Hatchet for that. And I wanted something with a little more swing distance and maybe a little bit more weight. And as I started looking, I got some recommendations from various people. I started looking at this hatchet because it has a 16 inch long handle and uh, a nice one pound head. And uh, it seems to be the perfect size 
to the kind of work that I do on a, on a, on a daily basis. And after I used it for a while, I learned that this is an all-purpose hatchet. It has a convex grind. It's not relatively shallow. It's kind of a steeper grind, which makes it very durable. The, the bit edge is durable. It doesn't chip or uh, dent easily. And uh, it has some disadvantages in carving, as I'll show you in a little bit. But it really bangs uh, solid pieces of kindling well. I haven't really had to do much maintenance to the edge after using it for a year. I think I've hit it, I hit it with a stone right before this video, so it's relatively sharp, not near as sharp as it was when uh, I first got it out of the box. And the MSRP on this bad boy, uh, according to the Holtzbrook website, is $154. I picked this one up for $139 free shipping from ImagineGear.com. And they sent it right away. I was really surprised how fast I got it. I also put a little note in the order when you can fill in the comments box. And I said, if you would, pick me out a nice one, please. And I'm not sure if they did or not, but I can tell you I really did get a nice one. So without further delay, we're going to take put the all mic to task. We're going to see how it does chopping. We're going to see how it does splitting, we're going to see how it does carving, and we're going to find out how it is for driving in a tent stake into frozen ground. So stay tuned as we put the all mic to the test. Okay, the first thing I like to do when I see a hatchet, see how it works for carving a point on the end of a stake, because that's what I do, the first thing I do when I break make camp is uh, I cut some stakes and pitch my tarp or my tent. Let's see how it does for that. This is green alder by the way. I do notice that it does want to glance off a little bit but in doing that it keeps the, the cut on there a little bit shallow. Sometimes I have a tendency with some of my other hatchets to dig too deep, but that put a nice point on there. Uh, try chopping a small piece here. Now this has a... I might end up taking that down a little bit and thinning that blade out just a, just a hair. <clears throat> just because that's the way I'm used to used to the grind being not bad at all I kind of I like this all right I usually don't camp right next to the outhouse but I'm going to try to drive a stake in a piece of a little piece of lawn and uh, they have some soil under there. There might be uh, frozen ground, but we'll find out how this hatchet feels in the hand when you're driving a stake. Okay, get to camp. We've got some stakes made. And uh, we're going to hope the ground isn't too frozen. That handle has a curve, which it really fits the hand nice when you're using it uh, in the standard position but I'm going to turn it over backwards and uh, it has a pretty good curve there it does put a little bit of strain on the wrist right here but uh, we'll see how it feels once I start driving the stake yeah it actually swings really nice I could drive stakes with this thing all day long Pass that test with flying colors. Because of the thickness of the convex grind on this, all my hatchet, it should perform really well for splitting small splits. We'll just find out here how it does. One thing I like about the long handle, a lot of times I'm using this 
patch it early in the morning. Maybe I haven't had my coffee yet. And uh, it gets the cutting blade kind of away from your body a little bit. And that makes the axe a lot safer because of the long handle. You get a little more of a swing too. If you're splitting shingles, it gets the axe well away from your body. You get a little more swing time, generates a little bit more energy. This hatchet weighs 1.75 pounds, has a one pound head, and the weight of the hickory actually adds to the force when you're splitting. I think this little hatchet performs exceptionally well splitting tough planks like I do on a daily basis. It busts the knots up really well and I uh, really like it for this purpose. I probably don't like it as well for, for chopping and probably not for carving. So I really have to do some soul searching to decide whether I want to grind that down a little bit and make it a little bit thinner because it does split really well. Well, in the background, it sounds like somebody laid an egg. That is the sound of breakfast, friends. I don't want to sound over-enthusiastic about every hatchet that I have in my hand. But I will tell you... There's a couple things I really don't like about this axe, and I'm going to tell you about it after we do some more testing. Here I have a piece of alder. I've been doing some carving with alder lately. It's a good thing to practice on, green alder. It uh, makes a nice spoon. It's not the prettiest wood, but we don't have birch in this area. Well, we don't have white birch in this area. I would just love to get a hold of some white birch carving wood that was green. But we're going to try this for doing some hewing and uh, shaping of this as if we were going to carve a kuksa or a spoon. First of all, I'll try to flatten this out. One thing I notice when I'm carving on this is the bit on the all mark mic is quite radiused. Uh, on some of my other hatchets, it's a, str a straighter bit and more of an acute angle coming back toward my body. And I feel like I get a little more leverage with my swing with those type of hatchets. This isn't really my favorite design for carving, but I'm sure it can be done. And there's probably people out there that enjoy this type of hatchet for carving. Here again, I'm glancing off instead of instead of slicing those cuts off. It tends to glance. So with that all-purpose convex grind, I'm just not too impressed. I don't fault the hatchet. It's actually better for pulse brooks to leave a thicker, more generous bit there. For durability and if somebody wants to uh, file that down and reshape it for carving that is there and it might void the warranty these do have a lifetime warranty according to the dealers uh, it's not really shown on their website too much but they do stand by their products I'm getting a lot of glancing uh, a lot of wasted energy. It, it'll get the job done just fine. But it does want to glance off. Could be part of my technique. But I did get it good and flat. I mean, it does the job. Find out how it does for splitting an oversized piece of wood. I would consider this a little too big for a hatchet. But we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Not bad. Well, the next thing we want to do is chop a large log, chop a notch in a large log as if we were going to create a, a, ra a platform for a raised bed or chop down a large tree. 
it's not a axis designed for that but sometimes we have to use our hatchets for jobs bigger than they are intended for let's just find out how it works for that I'm gonna block this into place with a couple of these splits here so it doesn't roll around and we'll just take some wax at it Okay, so it kind of wants to glance. So I'm going to say with that grind, probably not the best. Like I said, it'll get the job done in a pinch. But I bet you it would split this great big thing right down the middle without a problem because it's really a nice splitting hatchet well now that we've uh, hmm, made a big old mess I think it's time that I tell you the two things that really drive me nuts about the all mic they're not unforgivable sins and there's a couple things we can do about it and it isn't so bad but they're worth mentioning so I'm gonna do that Stay tuned. Okay. Well, the first thing that really caught me off guard when I unwrapped the all mic and pulled it out of the box was right here on the hickory handle, this great big warning label that they had kind of imprinted into the American hickory handle. To me, <laughs> to uh, put something like that on a nice hickory handle, this is one of the nicest hickory handles I've ever seen, folks. That's sacrilege, in my opinion. I just couldn't stand the looks of it. So what did I do? I mean, it was a big label. It was it was not just octung or something like you see uh, a warning, a little sticker on stuff. This was like a whole paragraph, like their uh, their legal team had uh, showed them how to do that. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, First thing I did is uh, sanded it off. Of course, we know that edge tools can be dangerous. They can get a lot of work done and they can be our best friends, but they can also cut off our extremities. So just handle your axes safe, and we, we don't need the label on there. Maybe they should have just put a little string tag here, which is what some companies do, a little warning label. That's a great idea. I would uh, recommend that to them. But anyway, it was easy to sand off. I put a new coating of uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil on here, and it was as good as new. Problem solved. So now, the next thing that bugs me, coming right up. Well, this problem probably isn't that big of a deal. And who am I to tell a Swede how to make an axe? They build the best axes in the world. So, but what I did notice is they put their maker's mark right out here it's quite deep it's uh right out there toward the edge of the bit and uh it seems like a area of weakness now because that's been stamped in there however i haven't heard any reports of these breaking whether it being a problem or not and they do stand behind their products these heads have a lifetime guarantee so i had heard about this and other people mentioned concern about that before I bought the hatchet but since they have such a good warranty I went ahead and ordered one anyway and I'm not sorry this might catch a lot of pitch where we use it like if we were to use it in the backcountry on uh, conifer saplings and stuff like that it might get a lot of pitch in there and goobered up a little bit but I don't see it being too big of a deal the quality the overall quality of the hatchet is just just wonderful. I'm probably going to leave it just the way it is because it carves stakes and drives stakes real well and it's excellent, has an excellent grind for for uh, splitting. If I do uh, file that a little bit thinner it won't be a whole lot because I want to uh, keep it as durable as I can. Well that about gives you the full rundown on the all mic. If you found this video to be helpful please sure to give us a like 
and feel welcome to subscribe to the West Fork Woodsman channel. We sure love to have you aboard. We have a lot more adventures and things to share uh, throughout the year. I'm going to leave you with the sound of some quiet music and some scenery of our homestead here in the Okanagan Highlands. Until next time, I want to wish you peace, health, and happy trails, folks. This is the West Fork Woodsman, over and out.